troubleshooting a run-on problem. Uh, the engine doesn't want to shut off, so I've already disconnected the wire from the shutoff solenoid, which is right there. And last time I had a problem with that solenoid, I w the engine wouldn't start. So basically it was stuck in the closed position. And now possibly it seems like it's stuck in the open position. When I touch the wire onto the terminal there at the top, it does make a clicky noise, but obviously you can't see inside, so I don't know if it's actually opening and closing. Remove this fuel line here so I can hopefully get some kind of tool onto that uh, solenoid. I think this is going to be pretty tricky to get that solenoid out, but I'm going to give it a shot. There's brass washers on both sides of that banjo and take the bolt out from the other side. And I'm just going to put these together right now so I don't get them confused or lost. There we can see the solenoid which is just to the left of the uh, max fuel load screw that adjusts your, uh, your fuel into the injector pump. So I'm gonna try to get some kind of tool on there and get that thing out. Okay, so take off the uh, accelerator cable, which is this one here. Put that aside. I don't know that this is gonna work, but I'm gonna try. So as of now, I know that this, uh, this fuel water filter is in the way, so I'm gonna go ahead and remove that. Try to move that out of the way as much as possible. Maybe drop it down into this hole. Yeah, that looks about right. Drop it down there. It's nicely out of the way. Push that fuel line down just a bit. That's probably about as much room as I'm gonna have. So either this works or it doesn't. Just don't know if I can get enough. I only have about, I've got maybe one eighth of a turn on here. By golly, I think that did it. Yes, it did. That's all I needed. Sweet. That seems to work. Okay. I haven't taken one of these out before. I've seen it done when I had this uh, calibrated, but I don't know if that plunger that just sits gonna come out or how that's gonna work. Gently and slowly lift this up. Yeah, it's not come out with it, so. Here we have the, uh, this is the start-stop solenoid. So now I've got to get that plunger out of there somehow. Oh, I can feel it, good, nice. Uh, that's the plunger there. Oh, I see what happened. This gasket here should actually be around here. Again, I don't recommend using the battery as a workbench. I've done some tool welding here on accident in the past. At least I try to be careful not to put the long metal ones next to the positive terminal. This is the uh, new one that I have, and this also says Japan, so I suspected that this should be as good quality. So this is where the, that's where that gasket should go, and for some reason it's popped off and gone into here. Wow, and that's heavily damaged there too. How did that get so damaged? I don't know if you can see that, but it's, uh, yeah, it's not supposed to look like that. This rubber also feels really dry. Okay, let's compare the plungers. Leave the spring inside. Okay, the new one there almost looks a little smaller. I don't know if that's gonna work anyway. That doesn't look quite the same. I don't know, I'll give it a shot, see what happens. Okay, so I've just tested the new plunger and it does fit tightly into the, so this does fit into the, the seat properly or it feels proper anyway. If anyone out there knows how this could have gotten damaged like that, I'd be very interested to know. I don't know if that's just age and it cracked off. 
the rubber on the new one feels a lot softer than the rubber on this one. Okay, so I'm just gonna test the old one to see if the magnetic part is working. And I'm gonna put, here's the, this is the wire that goes to the ignition. This is what powers the, the magnet. I'm gonna touch the housing here on, yeah, okay. So you can see there, oops. <laughs> okay, well that's how it works. So that's safely between the injector pump and the engine block, right where it belongs. Anyway, that's how that works. So uh, the magnetic part was working, but the plunger is damaged. Now I only have one spring. So I'm gonna be real careful with this. And first I'm gonna drop the spring into the plunger housing. Drop the spring into the plunger housing. And then I'm very carefully gonna drop the plunger into the receiver there. Okay. And I'm just trying to position it so that the top of the barrel of that plunger is as centered as possible so that this will nicely drop right around it. So here we go. Let's cross our fingers and say a prayer. All right, that seemed to, uh, that seemed to be acceptable. Okay, so now I'm going to turn on the ignition switch and then I'm just gonna test that that is clicking in a normal sounding way. Okay, I've tried to position the camera where you can see the cutoff solenoid. And now my wire here is hot from the ignition. So I have to be really careful not to touch any, any ground. There, I think you can see. And that's making the normal sound. It's lifting up and dropping down. So that'll be open, closed. So that's running, shut off, hopefully. We'll find out here in a bit. Just needs to be tight enough not to leak. So we're gonna put the new fancy tool down here. That drops right on. I don't know if I can get enough turns to actually tighten it. There it goes to lock. Let's see if I can get, oh good, there we are. Yes. Okay. And I think that's probably tight enough right there. My tool is not blocked by anything and I'm getting two, two hands of torque on there and it's not turning. So I'm gonna call that good. Again, I tend to over tighten everything. So now I'm gonna put the, uh, ignition wire back on and again I've turned the key off obviously so that that doesn't blow a fuse or start a fire so I'm going to put the ignition wire on and again try to get this nut on without dropping it between the okay I'm just gonna hold the Hold the wire from moving while I tighten the top nut. That's yeah, already. I'll put the. Uh, this is the. This is the maximum fuel load screw. This is the one I adjusted the other day, which worked and got me 1.6 bars of boost. Anyway, so I'm gonna put that in now while I've got a little more space. And as all I know is I've turned it <laughs> 32, 32 uh, small turns. One, two, three, four, five, eight, three, three, nine, 30. So that's, that's pretty rough, but that's in the ballpark anyway. Probably gonna wind that back just a hair. It's better, it's better to have low RPM and not enough fuel then too much fuel and too much RPMs that you can't control and blow up your engine. So just back that off a hair. Yeah, back it off even more. I can always adjust that later. I'm gonna put this uh, uh, banjo fitting back on. 
So here's the bolt that goes through the banjo fitting. Got one copper washer on one side or maybe brass, I don't know. And then one on the other side. All right, that's done. Now I'm gonna put the fuel, the fuel water filter back. If you drop your extension behind the, some of the wiring, and you just drop the extension into the socket without actually locking it. But it's in there tight enough for these, uh, Tight enough. 12 millimeter, so don't need them too tight. So everything important is in place, it looks like. Um, I'm gonna give it a test run and adjust the, uh, the main fuel load screw and then also the idle at the same time. So hopefully it'll run enough for me to do that. Let's give it a shot and see what happens. It doesn't start. I'm hoping it's because the, uh, the system needs to be primed. I've had to do this on the side of the road before, a couple times, before fixing the fuel tank sender. Sat a few days without any uh, pressure in the system. Maybe the fuel drained back to the tank. So from the uh, water, separator slash pump, hand pump. Uh, the fuel comes into uh, here. So I'm just gonna crack that open and then pump. Yeah, okay, so fuel's getting there. Okay, let's see if that new solenoid works. the ultimate test see if it shuts off with the key nice okay so that's fixed so I'm just gonna lock this nut here for the fuel load screw again if you leave your uh, socket unlocked from the ratchet it leaves enough space for the fuel line to pass between at least on this engine it does that's tight enough for now I'm probably gonna play with it again after it warms up a bit. I'm just locking the uh, idle screw because the engine idle right now is basically being controlled by the fuel load screw. So the actual idle adjustment really isn't doing anything right now. If anybody needs one of these sent to them, just let me know. Uh, these welds are stainless. Not the most beautiful thing in the world, but that is exactly what you need to get the start stop solenoid out and back in again so if you want to try to copy that at home that's <laughs> 24 millimeter 
And then this has been modified too. We welded on some extra material to sort of wrap around it because when it was more open, it would kind of slip off. So there you go. Um, it's still work. Still it's recording. Give him your